of my enemies do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have risen against me I would have lost heart unless I had believed That I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. The Lord is my shepherd.
Through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Time to mourn, a time 
to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace.
So if she was here today talking to me, she would say, Pearl, tell my family these words right here. Life is so easy when you're up on the mountain. You've got peace of mind like you never have known. But then Things change, Lord, when you're down in the valley. But don't lose your baby out, cause you're never
to this wonderful family who come to celebrate such a beautiful life. And I know that Mother Stokes was loved here, but she was also loved in the greater Sullivan community. The Long Branch Church is. So on behalf of my wife, our official board and leadership, we have our deepest, deepest condolences. The word of the Lord reads as such. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in times to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. So give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Six verses from Proverbs 31. May the Lord bring comfort May a spirit of celebration be in this place for a life well lived. Amen. To this family, to this life well lived, touched by so many. Jesus in his attempt to comfort the hearts of his disciples had to let them know that there's rejoicing for those who've died in the Lord. That while this is practice down here, we will have true rejoicing up there. So John 14, the words of Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas was having a little trouble comprehending this, so he says, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus had to bring him up to speed and said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God's word for God's people to him be all glory, honor, and praise.
But you were going to sustain that life for a little over 100 years. So God, we thank you from the depths of our hearts that you chose to allow each of us to share in the life of Mama Stokes. God, we thank you that she's been such a blessing not only to a few, but to the many. God, we thank you that not only did her children call her mama, but a lot of people, other people called her mama as well. Because she told them to do that. God, I thank you that back in the late 80s or early 90s, that when we were here at the East Reunion, she came over to me and my wife. She said to me and my wife, I'm your mama now. God, I thank you that she called my mother who was living at the time and she told my mother, you don't have to worry about your children. She said, they got a mother down here now. That's the kind of lady that you made, Sister Stokes. Truly, she was once, twice, three times a lady. God, we thank you for the lives that she touched. Now, God, we ask that you bless the family. Prop them up on every leaning side. Let them know that on Tuesday morning you did not make a mistake. Let them know, God, that when you sent your angel down to whisper in her ear, Mama Stokes, it's time for your train ride home. To give them peace and give them comfort for the days that are yet even unborn. On behalf of every person here, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you allowed us to share a life with Sister Mama Stokes. Now, God, when it's all said and done, we want to hear what she heard. We want to hear you say, well done. Because without a doubt, we know you told her, well done, God, good and faithful servant. God, we thank you for the mansion that she now moved into. We thank you, God, for the crown that she's going to be wearing. We thank you, God, for the golden slippers. God, God, we got to say thank you. And it's all said and done. We'll continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Bless Dr. Williams as he comes to give words of comfort to this family. In the body of Christ said amen. 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 And amen. And the people of God said amen. 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 Thank you to our program participants who have participated thus far. Thank you, Easley Union Choir. Thank you, Sister Butler. Thank you, Pastor Dobin, Pastor Buford, and Pastor Beckett for your part on the program. Before um, her granddaughter comes, I'm going to ask if all members of the clergy would please stand rather quickly so that this family can acknowledge who is here to show love to them. Friends and brothers and sisters, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. That shows the impact that Mama had on so many people. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to ask if Sister Kimberly Austin would please come at this time with a selection. Spoiled all of us. 
And uh, my sister and I went someplace with her to a store. And she bought something, and um, she thought she gave the lady a $100 bill. So Granny was feisty. So she stood her ground, and she argued with that lady that she gave her a $100 bill, and she didn't give her enough change back. So we left. Granny lost that battle. We left, and we were going down the street and went, I think, to get gas or made another stop. And it, she remembered that she had gotten something before that store, and she broke the $100 bill in that store. <laughs> so some people would have said to themselves, oh my gosh, I owe that lady an apology. That, you know, she gave me the right change. But my granny went back to that store and went to that lady and apologized and said, I'm sorry, I was wrong, you were right. So that's just an example of the type of woman my grandma was. So I'm going to try to sing just a little bit of this song. I believe the storm will soon be over. I believe the rain will go away. That I can make it through it. Oh, I believe it's already done. to her two daughters, to my grace and my dot. You never missed a beat. Whenever mama needed something, you two were right there. And I believe that I can speak on behalf of the entire Walker and Stokes family when we say, job well done. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the care that you, that, you given, that you gave your mother. Deserving care that you gave to your mother. Mama, I just want to say 
Thank you. So many memories that I have that in no way can two minutes do justly. <laughs> so many memories. And I will summarize it all with a two letter word, thank you. Thank you, Mama, for being that, our mother. You are our nurturer. You are our provider. You are everything that we needed. I'll never forget all of those times I got on your nerves <laughs> asking you to go and buy me cassette tapes of the countywide revival. You can gamble, you can testify to that. I'll never forget those times in the house on 22 Ladson Street when storms would come through and the power got knocked off. And me and my brother would go and huddle in your bed. And not only would you impart wisdom to us, but you would also give us the daily gossip. <laughs> As only you could. But mama, I'm mindful of the fact that even though you birthed several children, you were a mother to so many. I'll never forget that day in 2012, when me and just you, everybody else was gone out of the house. We were gathered there at the dining room table and we were just having a conversation talking one to another, and I shared with you how I felt as though God had called me to preach. You just simply said, as only you could say, baby, I'm gonna pray for you, <laughs> but I'm the wrong person to talk to. <laughs> you would give your encouragement, you would give your love, but also you would give your correction. Just the other day, when I received a call at 6.36 in the morning, let me tell you all how God works. About a year ago, I had spoken to one of my aunts and I had told them God had given me peace about some things that I felt were getting ready to transpire. At 6.36 on Tuesday morning, as I was awakening from my sleep, I received a call from my Aunt Gracie I already knew. I already knew the origin of the call. And all I could say when I heard those words was just lift my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for 100 strong years. Thank you for being who you were and never apologizing for who you were. But Mama, I want to close by just saying this that I love you, and there's nothing you will ever be able to do about it. And I believe on Tuesday morning, while you were sleeping, and the angel of God came to retrieve you from this earthly temple, I believe that when you arrived to heaven's gate, you hung the words of the hymnologist, oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the sweets of glory, let me lift my voice. And I want to close by saying to you, Mama, Mama, your cares are past. Mama, you're home at last. Mama, you're home ever to rejoice. Mama, enjoy heaven. Enjoy the crown. Enjoy your road. But all I want to say is thank you, mama. Thank you, mama. Thank you, mama. Thank you, mama.
Morell's more the public one and more the private one. But I requested to speak. I pulled up on Dot's phone to make sure I had the opportunity. And if she was gonna text me back, I was gonna call her. I said, I have to do this for mama. This is my way of saying, see you in a few. I wrote this for mama. I said, mama, you taught me how to laugh. You taught me how to joke. You taught me how to brighten the days of others that may be going through a storm. You taught me sensitivity. But what you taught me the most in val important values in life was compassion for others. Your faith in God was unlike any others I've ever seen. Even dealing with storms in your own life and pain, you would always call on God before you would call on anyone else. Just like the brother said, I remember when that big ice storm in 05 and 02 happened and we would cuddle up in our bed just to kill time because the power was out. But getting in there, we would hear important values of wisdom and her telling her old stories of the good old days about beat. <laughs> and uh, she tells about beat and stories of just of how life was coming up. She came from very humble beginnings. She came from the days of the era of the Great Depression. But you couldn't tell that by the way her heart was. Her stories were so out there, it, we would laugh so loud that I definitely knew the neighbors could hear us. You know, Mama, this is the first time me and you have been in the church together physically in a while. But I remember sitting in that third row where I'm sitting at right now, every Sunday, if my friends right here, I was sitting right there beside you, listening to, watching you bop your head to the choir singing, and then Reverend Cool would come here and speak. I love the man. Sermons were a little long for me, so I would <laughs> not off, but not off for me. But I, that wasn't last long because I would felt the thump of your finger. But, uh, you know, another important value she taught me was patience. <clears throat> the value of patience was very, very important to her. Like the time where she had the patience of not to kill me when she gave me the keys to the car, right out there, said, start the car for me. And I said, you know, side today, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and learn to drive today. <laughs> And all I remember is almost running into that guardrail outside. Man, I didn't hear that. She would not let me live that down. Even though I wouldn't come visit her, she was still talking about it. Man. You know, in her later years, she liked to watch crime shows, tabloid television, Jerry Springer, Mari, Steve Wilkos, you know. She'd be talking to the TV at times. She also liked watching cop shows, the volume on high. I remember you made us memorize the 23rd song and anointed us with oil. I used to not like to go to church at all coming up as a kid, but you know, living with grandma, that was not an option. So some Sunday mornings where I'm like, okay, she's still asleep, maybe she doesn't want to go this morning. I would purposely try and you know, sleep and cover my head up with the covers. But look, that light flips on, she's like, get up, you're going to church today. Mom, I don't feel like going today. She didn't have that. Mm -mm. She going to pause, get to close out, she'll throw it on you. <laughs> I have two daughters, Zendaya and Chanel, who you loved very much. Zen would always say when I came to get her, Daddy, I want to go see Granny. I'm just grateful that they were able to experience what I felt as a kid, your love even if it was only for a short season. And the last time I saw you was on June 23rd. I came in your room, and thankfully it was just me and you. I prefer it when it's just me and you so we can have our more private talks. And I came in there to see you, and you were sleeping, peacefully and beautiful as always. I know you're not a big fan. Again, woke up out of your sleep, but I came in there and just kiss you on the forehead and tapped your cheek a little bit and said, Mama, I'm here. 
And we just had some good discussions. She wanted to know how the kids were doing. And I said, they're doing wonderful. And then I had some private talks with her, and it got pretty, pretty deep. Since she turned 100, it's been weighing on my mind a lot. And I couldn't stop thinking about her, so that's what drove me to go see her. Plus, she was like to answer the phone, so I had to go see her. But um, I went up to her, and I talked to her privately, and I said, Mama, are you ready to go home? And she said, oh, honey, yes. And that gave me the biggest smile because I knew she was not afraid to die. And we talked for about an hour about it. And then I had to get ready to go. And I gave her a kiss. I said, Mama, I love you. And she said, I love you too, son. God bless you. That's what she always says when you're departing her. And last time I saw her, she was telling me about she had been seeing her parents, Papa O.C., and her siblings, especially Aunt Florence and Aunt Margaret, visiting her often. At first, I thought it was just maybe the talk, but she was becoming more and more regular every time I seen her. So I believe Monday night, she went to sleep, and Papa O.C. came to visit her again and saw that she was sleeping. And he said, you know what, this time of F, I'm taking you home. So I believe that, that he sent the death angel to come visit her. And he woke her up and said, we're taking you home. She's like, all right, good, we're going to 22 Lassen Street. He was like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I got a new house for you that's not made by man. You're about to be walking the streets of gold. You're about to be in everlasting paradise. The only hand you need to reach out for is God's unchanging hand. And that gave me comfort. When I got that call on Tuesday morning, I saw it was several missed calls, and I knew that's what it was. You know, at first I was in shock, and I was devastated. But then I remember she told me this a while back. She said, son, I'm ready to go. Don't be sad for me. You may shed a tear, but that's okay. And I already know her reaction when she got to heaven. She went to Papa O.C. and said, oh, no, I got to make sure them boys are okay. And he was like, F, leave them alone. They okay. <laughs> So, Mama, I've made peace with this, and I know where you're at. You won't want to come back, so I'm not going to be selfish. But, Mama, I love you to death. I will see you on the other side, and God bless you, Queen, and I'll see you in the morning. for because I know that 
her ticket has been stamped. I know that she has gotten that ticket to go across the Jordan. And there's only one way that you can go across the Jordan. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that's got to give you that ticket. You can't get it any other way. And to think about what really made me start to cry when I came into the church. When we were singing the song about over yonder and how they're having peace over there. I looked around this church and I still look around this church. And my tears were for a lot of you. Not just my family, but a lot of you in this church right now. If you have lost a family member, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a child. When I think that mama is there where they are, and they're all rejoicing and having a good time. The rejoicing in heaven, it started early Tuesday morning. But we want to be thankful for God allowing for this day for us to be able to celebrate the home going of mom. And I did want to correct Pastor Stokes. He, he said a few minutes ago, oh, I, I, I may talk too long because I'm a pastor. No, no. <laughs> you may talk too long because you're a Stokes. <laughs> from my mama. It was some of your loved ones too. But what makes me joyful is to know that they're together again. They're all together. Mama told me many times, most of all my friends are gone. And she would tell me that she's ready for Jesus. And of course, me being the youngest boy, you know, I tried to get her off that subject. I said, Mama, what word puzzle are you doing? <laughs> but I'll say this and sit down because my nephew did sort of touch on an important, very important message that I wanted to relay. On behalf of all the boys, all the Stokes boys, on behalf of the brothers, the nephews, the grandsons, whatever, all the boys, and of course, really all of the girls too. I wanted to give a special thanks to, to two people. My sister, Darcina, we call her Dot, Darcina Hendricks. And my sister, Gracie Bowens, we call Grace. Y'all were there when Mama needed you most. And all us boys, we appreciate y'all so much. Now, we may get on y'all nerves sometimes as your brothers, but, but at the end of the day, you're still our sisters today and forevermore. And we'll love you today and forevermore. Thank you so much for what y'all did for Mama. May God give you a special blessing. Amen. Yeah, see, I ain't talking to Rachel. 
that all oh, men on CF Lane got wood. So Aunt Florence, Aunt Margaret, all them, they, oh, they were celebrating. Oh, my sister's coming home. My sister's coming home. So at Mama Rise, his daddy, Uncle Larry, Aunt Mama Lee, all his sisters, her grandkids that were left before her. Like I had a son, Eugene, a daughter. God had a son, I had a son. All them parade moms. Now they up there with grandpa and everybody else. So as mama get closer, everybody start dancing and shouting and singing. And as she go through, that in my mind, I'm picturing it like this. Like you got a soul train line. <laughs> Tori would love that. I'm giving that. And I say, no, Tori 
can't wear that. Tori, yes, Tori will. Tori will. So everybody knew exactly what to do. You take it. Thank your mama. Thank your grandmama. You leave the house. You dispose of it. <laughs> we had one granddaughter. She didn't know a trick. She came there one day, and that was Tasha. My mother gave Tasha something. Tasha takes it, goes outside. It's a trash can right there. Tasha puts it in the trash can. And my mama's friend, B, who mellows in everything in my mama's house, she saw, I mean, he saw, when to, um, Tasha put it in the trash can. B goes in the trash can and gets it out, takes it back in the house. That, that girl threw it in the trash can. <laughs> my mama said, I'm, I'm not, I can't repeat what my mama said. So I'm just going to say, she said, I'll never give her nothing else. <laughs> My mama loved her kids and her grandkids. And she was always trying to give them things. So I'm going to fast forward to her home at 661 uh, Rutherford Road. Now my mama would play bingo over there. You know, they had these little dollar gifts and all. And the only thing that my mama talked about was getting a gift for her kids and her grandkids. And I would tell her, that's okay. They don't want it. I mean, they, they don't need it. Oh, yes, they do too. And then you could not tell my mama no for nothing. Oh, God, my mama, that mean streak I'm talking about, my mama had it. And any of them over there at the center would tell you, your mama got a mean streak in her. <laughs> now, Dot and I, we knew it. We knew how she was. But one day, she had to go to the hospital, to the emergency room. My three brothers, Tree, Blonde, and Tony, they went with her and stayed with her that day. And oh, my God. They talked about how rough that woman was. <laughs> She gave them a, uh -huh, now you know what me and Doc been saying. She gave them a rough time. I'm not going to say everything that my mama, I'm not going to tell you everything that she was about. But I will tell you this, we loved her very much. And I feel, I feel good that she was in my life. For 79 years, she was in my life that long. And I loved it. Now, she would make, when I left from there, Gordon and I, Gordon was a sidekick too. He was there every time that I was there. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you this one little particular thing that happened not long ago. My mom would go into these, I now call them the dark places. And she wasn't herself when she went in those places. So this particular day, she was in one of those places. And it was something that she wanted, and I wouldn't give it to her. So she says, God, give me that right over there. Well, God got up, and he said, Grace, I'm going to go on out and wait on you. God, give me that right over there. God kept right going straight to that door. She said, God, give me that right boy. She said, you big dummy. <laughs> but now, I'm going to tell you about her other home. The heavenly home. My mom told me one day I was there, and my mom, we had a picture of all her sisters. And, and she says, you know, Gracie, my sisters just keep moving on over. And I looked at her, knowing the picture not, you know, moving, they're not moving. And she said, 
They keep moving on down, Gracie, she says. I think they're making room for me. So, September the 5th, 2023, her sisters made room for her to come. And I can just imagine that when those pearly gates opened up, I could hear my granddaddy, Reverend Charles Dana Walker, say, Hassie, there comes our last child. And he says, F, because that's what they call her. Come on in here, F, and join all of us. And I can imagine what a glorious time in heaven that they are having right now. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for letting us borrow her 100 years. And we all say, to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you to those who have spoken so wonderful about our grandmother and mother. At this time, we're going to invite Sister Shante Krul to come and to give us a solo, and then we shall hear the words of comfort from her nephew, Dr. James H. Williams, pastor of Easley Union Missionary Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, I just wanted to say uh, for my brother and I and our family, Miss Ethelene, we only called her Miss Ethelene when she wasn't around. We had to call her Granny, because if not, she was going to get us. And we had to make sure that when we seen her, it was Granny Stokes and not Miss Ethelene, because we was going to get it. But from my, my family to yours, thank you for letting us borrow her and call us, letting us call her Granny and sharing that with us. Because the Lord is my shepherd. 
years. I celebrated my birthday at 44. And to know that she's just been through all of these things. And I just have to look back at my life to hold myself accountable for the things that I need to do in my life. When you look at somebody who's been through the Great Depression. They've been through World War II. She's done been through Korea. She done been through Jim Crow. And we sit here today and some of us think our life is bad, baby. But to be here 100 years and know that God has kept you safe in his arms is a blessing. And I'm sitting here today as a witness to say I'm glad. I'm glad y'all can sit here and sing for this thing. Because my daddy loved him. charm and grace 
But one thing you need to understand about Anathel Lane, she had wit. She had wit. And she could, she could get you talking and have you laughing all at the same time. Get you told and have you laughing. I went to visit her one time in the nursing home and so I was sitting there, she and I were there talking and she said, James, tell Frankie I really enjoyed that pound cake. I said, I have name. Frankie didn't, didn't send no pound cake. She said, I know. <laughs> tell her I enjoyed that pound cake. Well, the next day, I went over and told Frankie what she said. Frankie went in there and baked a whole pound cake, sent it over to Grace, told Grace to cut up a pound cake, put pieces in the refrigerator, and every time she fit on the lean to make sure she carry her a piece of that pound cake. At one time, my brother Melvin and I went by to visit her, and he hadn't talked with her in a long time. So he told her, he said, Aunt Ethelene, James has given me your phone number. So now I'll be able to stay in contact with you. And she looked at him and looked at me and said, he gave it to you? He said, yeah. Well, you can give it back to him. Because <laughs> he ain't been using it. <laughs> well, all I can do was just laugh and look in her face. But let us be real here as well. It's important for us to understand that we're here today not just because on Evelyn died, but moreover we're here because she lived. It was in her living that she touched the lives of everyone who gathered here this afternoon. And for those who know Christ as Lord and Savior, can have solace, can have peace, can have comfort in times like these, not because Christ died, but because Christ lived. The songwriter captured the essence of that when he said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and this life is worth the living just because he lived. You see, it's Paul in his verse, in his letter, first letter to the church of Thessalonica, that he instructs us to encourage one another with the assurance of the fact that Christ lived. Yeah. Paul instructs us to comfort each other with God's word. Yeah. And right now, I know your hearts are heavy, and I know you need a word. I know you need a word. So let's look at Hebrews 11, 16. Hebrews 11, 16. For the word of God says, but now, they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. For those of you who knew Aunt Ethelene, you knew that every time you visited her, whether she was at home or whenever she was in the hospital or she was in the nursing facility, whenever you visited her, Aunt Ethelene, always, always had her Bible in her hand. It seemed as though the Bible gave her great joy, assurance, and confidence in reading the Bible. As already been stated by those, she lived 100 years, six months, and five days. And yes, she's witnessed great things. She's experienced the great joys of life, the great sorrows of life, and the great griefs of life. As stated, she's lived through wars and social changes. She's been there when family had celebrations. She's been there when family had disruptions. She's been there for the new births of all the children in the family, and she's been there for the death of all the members in the family. But she was the last living member of her immediate family, as already been said. Her Bible, the never-changing word and promises of God, has been the foundation that has guided her through all of this 100 years, six months, and five days. But it seemed to me that in her latter years, her reading of the Bible intensified and her focus changed. Changed from the Bible being a source and a guide that she leaned it heavy upon 
to deal with the trials and tribulations of life. I know some of you are probably saying, how do you reach this conclusion? And I will say to you that everyone who talked to her in the last several years has a testimony already been given by Morel, Marcellus. Whoever you talk to, you would attest to the fact that she would always put you on notice, that she was ready to leave this earthly home and take up residence in a new home, a home called heaven. And just, I just believe that her Bible, the word and promise of God became more, came more than just how to live the life Christ called us to live to becoming the reward and benefits of living a life in Christ. Her Bible became her brochure of life in the land of the eternal living, just like you going on a trip, get a brochure to see all the things that's going to happen, all the things that are planned in the place where you're going to visit. She, on Ethelene, as the summit says, but now they, and who was they? They are the believers in Christ. They are the ones who have had the promise. They are one who's in the hall of fame of faith. They, like Anathalene, had received the promise of God, but were living it out through their faith. They knew that God had a better place for them. As the summit said, they desire a better, that is, a heavenly place. You see, Aunt Ethelene was a centurion. She was blessed with longevity of life. But she read in her Bible brochure about a place where there was eternal life and there was no more dying. You see, she had dreams that you've already heard about wanting to be with her mother and her father, her husband and her son. But she read about a place that she could have eternal life with them forever. And those who've been testified before you on a daily basis, those who visit her in her room, that picture you just heard about, that sat there on the mantel beside her bed, the picture of all of her sisters that was there. And each one of those sisters had already left and had gone to the promised land. But she read in her Bible brochure that there is a place where they can all be together again and celebrate God's glory. But most of all, she wanted to go to a place where Jesus was, the one who died for her sin, the one who put her in a right relationship with God. She wanted to go see Jesus, and she read about a place where Jesus was waiting for her to come. Our text says she desired to go to a better country called heaven. And what B of our text says, therefore God is not ashamed to, to be called their God, but he has prepared a city for them. And I just believe that in her Bible brochure, she read about this place called heaven. A place John on the Mount of Patmos gives us a view of how it looks but I heard John say, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, the first heaven had passed away, and there was no more sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be their God. And in this fourth verse, she read what John explained, the kind of life that you're going to have in heaven. But John said, he, God, will wipe away all the tears from their eyes. That there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the older, older things have passed away. She read about a place called heaven. 
heaven is a place she desired to be. However, she was caught between two forces. The first force was a desire to stay with her family and be here. She wanted to continue to impart that wisdom and knowledge. And she wanted to be there to meet all the new births coming into the family, to hold them and share with them her love. And the second force she was dealing with was that she wanted to leave this world of dying and suffering and pain for a better country and be with her family and be with the Lord. Now, she understood Paul's plight, being caught between two desires when he said, so we always confident, knowing that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be home, absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. I just believe that she made up her mind and was ready to leave this world. I believe that she was at peace, as you already heard said and testified. That she was at peace and she had already made her declaration. And you heard that already testified. And that is that when God was ready for her, she surely was ready for God. She was at peace because she remembered reading in her Bible brochure that John says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, that you may be there also where I am. Her room was ready. And on September the 5th, somewhere before 8 a.m. 8 a.m. in the morning, God was ready for her. And an angel was dispatched to bring her home. All she needed was to change this earthly body for an eternal body. For you see, these bodies are not designed for the trip to heaven. These bodies are only designed for the first leg of the trip. See, I have to lay understood that because she read in her Bible brochure, she read where it said, 2 Corinthians 15 and 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You see, death is the last door that we walk through. And death is the last enemy to be destroyed to that better land called heaven. And after Lean has walked through that door, and after Lean has witnessed the destruction of death, after Lean is now in the promised land. She has fought the good fight. She has kept the faith. She's now resting in the bosom of her heavenly father. But I wanted to say this to you, family. One of her greatest desires would be to see you again. And if you don't have your ticket punched, Cousin Tony, as you described, if you don't have that passport, Stamp with the blood of Jesus Christ that gives you admission into the promised land. If you don't have that passport, then you cannot see her again. So I come before you today and I beg of you, while the blood 
is still running warm in your body. If you have not, if you have not accepted him as your Lord, he said, make sure you do it. Do it today. And what makes me think you have time? If you want to see her again, you're going to have to be ready. She's there. She's at peace. She would not come back here if she could. Well, she has no more pain. She has no more suffering. She has no more doctor visits. She has no more hospitalizations. She's at peace. She's home with the Lord. Amen. But now they desire a better. That is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. On Ethelene, well done. Well done. Well done. Can we give her a hand?